Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I promise my contribution will be extremely, extremely brief. Um, Mr. Speaker, let me take the opportunity first to, um, before I go into my brief contribution, let me just take the opportunity to congratulate um, the Digger Combined School in my community that just won the Courts Reading Competition. Um, I think, Mr. Speaker, um, we need to recognize, you know, that achievement, especially since the, the only Friday gone, they had a, 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 an award ceremony. And I, I didn't see the minister. Well, you, told, you told me that's your favorite place to visit, and I didn't see you there on Friday. Oh, you don't go to church? Yeah. I say you um, and Mr. Speaker, and the theme for that award ceremony was empowering minds to discover, dream, and exceed expectations while achieving holistic excellence. And what a wonderful gift to the school to complement that theme, Mr. Speaker. I also understand that OJ came second and Dame Paulet came third. So hats off to the, the winners. But again, congratulations to the Diga School, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I just, you know, I, I, I thought that this was a very simple motion um, to have, um, for us to have dealt with. Um, I think, um, you know, the blame is trying to be put on the leader of the opposition, but we must remember the Prime Minister led, began the race. The Prime Minister began the race, Mr. Speaker. And um, at one point, I thought the the debate was about um, benefits to the Ministry of Health. Um, and, and I would suggest that, you know, the, the member from Dufort North maybe, um, you know, address all of the contribution today in a, in a minister's statement. That would have been well received, you know, because now I have had all that information that you've given, you know, and, and a document. Member for Suzel, you have to recall that the member was responding to what was said by the leader of the opposition that healthcare was in a total mess and that um, the health centers in the Castries Basin were inoperable. The healthcare was, by, I think, so maybe a ministerial statement was not thought of in advance because he didn't think it necessary that he would have had to respond to. Yeah, yeah Mr. Speaker, I hear you, but he just had so much to say, Mr. Speaker, you know, I, 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 I thought. Um, but there was something he, he mentioned um, with regards to some private doctors um, that would be seeking some VAT exemption going forward for some equipment. And, right, I, I, I just want my two, my, my, my two cents on it, and that is, as a government, when we are going to you know, provide such incentives, that there seems to be a correlation where the government could ask for some period um, to, 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 to recognize some patients who cannot afford the high cost and maybe have certain discounts, you know? When, you, you, when the government, when the state helps you, you have a period where you have certain discounts for people who cannot afford. Um, I think it should be a two-way street. Um, just, just something that could be put in as a recommendation when, when, when these, um, um, you know, requests come to the attention of the government. Um, to speak. Um, while the, the, the motion seeks to provide incentives, um, um, well, relief of VAT on the import of local supply of goods and services to the National Trust, um, generally I, I support Mr. Speaker, but I would think that it would be a little bit more um, holistic if the Prime Minister and his team could have come up with other entities that could have benefited from that as well. Because we have other non-profit organizations who, who may, on hearing this, would now, you know, so maybe we could have come with one list. No, I'm just saying. If they apply to SSDF. Okay, so um, going forward, you know, well, I'm hoping that they are listening and they could take advantage of this. Because I know there are endless other entities who you know, always complaining about the, the, the restrictions because of, of that. And so they could take advantage of coming to cabinet and um, parliament and, and getting um, 
um, such address. But there's a one concern, Mr. Speaker, and I know it was part of the discussion earlier with regards to the canal development. And um, I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping maybe the minister at some point can address it. But I was fortunate to pass there not too long ago, and I noticed that there was some, um, I don't want to say destruction in its entirety, but the mangrove, and I think that's something that the National Trust in the past have been very, very vocal about. And I noticed that the mangrove has been, has been partially destroyed and um, as to the effects, long-term effects, how it will affect you know, the, the, the community uh, and the ecosystem. So it is one of the things that and I'm hoping with that sort of benefit going to National Trust, a lot more emphasis will be placed on some of these um, areas in St. Lucia where their focus should be um, in terms of the preservation of some of our ecosystems and as a member for um, um, Castries South, South, Southeast, Southeast said, you know, other, other, other buildings of interest. So that's my very brief contribution, um, Mr. Speaker, and I thank you.